Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Red Pill Tamales, the show that has gotten me in a lot of trouble. Uh, anytime I post online, you know, I have a lot of ignorant, closed-minded followers. I wish would just unfollow me. We posted something about Cubans fighting for their freedom, and there are people that are very ignorant that follow me that rather take the side of the communist regime. And then I tell them, so you're taking the side of the communist regime? And they're like, so you're taking the side of America? Oh my God, this is RPT, and that is why we do what we do. We're trying to do the Lord's work and spread that truth, the real facts, not that BS shit you see on the lamestream media. Uh, today's episode, uh, first of all, I am Chingo Bling. We have producer Rob. Coming in hot. We coming in extra hot, never lukewarm. Um, we have a very special guest today, Jonathan Copel, uh, an educator from Louisiana. He went viral when he started speaking up at these uh, student uh, school board meetings. Mm -hmm talking about the dangers of critical race theory yes um it's it's blew up the internet all his clips when he goes up there and shuts down the school boards and calls them out for what they're doing they're spreading marxist doctrine to our kids and uh we reached out rob reached out mm -hmm. we lined up the interview came in super hot because there are some uh there's some breaking news in cuba and uh jonathan has some sources and he's been you know spreading the info and of course Americans, we have it so good. We do. That they believe the mainstream news. They got the head up the ass. Um, they love circle back Jen Psaki. Uh, they love this Biden regime. And they don't have a heart for the people of Cuba. No, uh, Jonathan came in hot too. Like he was about, you know, we were going to, we plan on talking a lot about CRT, which we did, and the school system and education, but we did also spend quite a bit of time on on Cuba. And he's just—you could tell—he's a really genuine, enthusiastic, you know, individual who wants to try to do as much good as possible. Yeah, I think John and I—we need to go get our blood pressure checked because. We care too much. See, Rob does a good job of just letting that shit slide. He's kind of, you know, Rob cares, but at the same time, he's good about self-care. So he don't be arguing with people in the comments. Rob be like, fuck social media. I'm trying to see what kind of gummies Rob is on. <laughs> See, he's just carefree uh, laughing. You, I'm over here yelling at my phone like, you got these stupid motherfuckers. Dude, you know Bitch, go funny? follow John Leguizamo, bitch. Dude, I feel responsible for that. I feel responsible that your blood pressure goes that high about this stuff. Well, before you reached out like, hey, man, you want to uh, do a podcast about all this stuff that you're talking about? My blood pressure was already high because unfortunately, the vast majority of Mexican-Americans that follow me, they misinterpret everything. Yeah. If I post something about Cuba saying, hey, guys... The, uh, the government of Cuba is actively torturing, beating, sequestering, murdering, slaughtering Cubans that are just fighting for the freedom. All they have is sticks and stones. They've been disarmed a long time ago. They're tired of communism. And what do these little jerks say? Hey, man, like Dr. Dre says, everybody got to fall off sometime. You fell off. Damn. How the hell I fell off? Because I'm talking about Cuba. <laughs> Dude, so yeah, we talk a lot about it in the podcast. It's just, they're just dumb ideas, right? And some things are just, they're really idiotic. And it's not, it, when I say this, it just sounds, I don't know, fucking full of myself, but like, I can't, I do get mad. Don't get me wrong. When, when I see comments and shit on the Weather Said page, or on your stuff, or whatever, I'm just like, man, it makes your blood boil, right? Because it's so dumb. You can't help but think that somebody can't, you hope that someone's not that dumb. Yeah, there's even dumb patriots. Like, for example, uh, I posted something about Aaron Lewis on the What Did He Said page. And this person attacked me. He was so patriotic. He's gone so patriot that he circled back around and he became anti-patriot <laughs> because he was like, oh yeah, well, where were you on 9-11? Because you and Aaron Lewis were old enough to go be real patriots and sign up for the ejército. And you over here just making little songs and stuff. And I'm like... Hey, man, you're not a mind reader. You don't know if I signed up, got rejected. Right. You don't know if I'm flat-footed. You don't know if maybe my parents were busted up in the, in the, in the Marine He don't corps. know the tonsil story that you were... Uh, yeah, you he know, don't know feeble. I had my tonsil still until I was 31. <laughs> you don't know none of that. You don't know if maybe I wasn't a patriot. Uh, you know what, dude? And I battle with this, and we'll probably do uh, like a chingo chat about all this, but I battle with being really empathetic because I just I care about humans, right? Humanity and like what everyone needs is the basic needs which people in Cuba aren't getting right now, right? I battle that with the desire to just want to learn and then also not educate, but learn and then just project that or, or give it out to the world. Like, this is what I learned. You should probably know it too. Everyone should, you know, read up on history, read up on, you know, what's going on, be informed, try to, you know, navigate the disinformation and misinformation. But at the same time, when you're met with that kind of resistance, you're just like, mother. Yeah. <clears throat> I went live yesterday on Facebook. Oh, you know time, huh? 
¿Cómo? Lo vino time. Yes, yes. I just went live because, you know, I, I've been so busy juggling so many things and um, I need to stay in people's face. Like today, I wanted to shoot skits, but it's like we can only do one thing at a time. So I'm going to get back on my skits next week. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I was going live and I was just talking about like, you know, human trafficking. And somehow it just went down. You know, we touch on serious things. And um, and then I told them, I was like, but you know what? Apparently, a lot of y'all don't like this stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just be just like John Logazamo and Eva Longoria. And I'm going to just shut up. And you're not going to hear a whole bunch of patriotism out of me. Of course, I'm being sarcastic, right? Yeah. I'm going to be just like them. And when it's 4th of July, I'm going to just say, have a good long weekend. And you won't see no flag emojis. Uh, you know, and it's like, if that's what y'all really want, just unfollow me, man. Go go to George Lopez page and get all that good socialist leftist doctrine. You know, go get you some of that Leguizamo communism. Yeah, the unfortunate part is that people rather consume that that what they're about to consume, Jonathan Copel's podcast, where he's giving you the facts, right? As an educator, somebody who has actually studied abroad or visited abroad and has things to bring back and, and is trying to do good with what he's learned and in learning now. No, 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 no. They don't want to have any of that. They want to have what you just described. Yeah, man. So before we get into that super hot interview, with Jonathan Copel. Uh, man, I'm a huge fan of what he does. Um, he's doing the Lord's work. He's a patriot. He's sticking his neck out. He's standing up for what he believes, and we need more people like him. Oh, um, yeah. You know what? Before you get into your tour dates, everyone should go follow him because, and I'm not trying to, sh you know, no shots fired at Ivory Hecker here, the Houston reporter from Fox that, you know, got all this exposure. But she's got like close to 200,000 followers now, and she had like 10 maybe whenever this all happened. And Jonathan's sitting at like 15 or 16 or whatever. And, like, 15 with thousand? Yeah. Like he should have at least you know, a quarter of a million. Well, yeah, we're going to spread the word. Go find, follow Jonathan Copel. Uh, we'll post his links yeah. and everything. And I, we've been reposting this stuff on, on our Instagram pages. Um, and he even mentioned at the end of the interview, he wants to put together, because he's a musician as well, he wants to put together some like freedom uncensored block parties, events. And I told him, I'm in, bro. I just want to attend and be a part of it. Um, you know, I'm doing the freedom of speech tour. And that's stand-up comedy, and I'm coming to Ontario, California. I think I'll be in Ontario by the time this airs. July 14th. So it'll be tonight, 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 Ontario, California. We sold it out. You guys sold it out. We added a show. Then we do July 16th, Waco, Texas. Do not miss it. Do not miss it. July 17th. It was going to be Midland, but we switched venues. We're going to be at the Ector Theater in Odessa, Texas. July 25th, Phoenix, Arizona. August 11th, Irvine. Beautiful California. August 18th, beautiful San Jose. August 27th through the 29th, Denver, where shrooms are legal. Come on now. September 9th through the 11th, Chuco Town, El Paso. September 15th, Brea. And we just added, we, we moved um, Oxnard for September 16th. So I got to type it in my notes. Uh, October 7th through the 10th, Addison, Texas. But go to my website, man. We have San Antonio as well, Houston as well. Do not get sold out. It's going to be a ton of fun, but if I were to believe it. And if you want to catch your merch, there is still some merch available, right? Uh, yeah. TIA merch at jingleblink.com slash That's merch. Right. Yeah, there's a low stock alert on the uh, Mexican-American shirts, uh, the one with the little eagle on the chest. Um, you just, you know, go to the website, man, <laughs> jingleblink.com. <laughs> All right, well, I guess with that said, enjoy the episode, huh? Thank you guys so much. Tune in, spread the word about this episode. This is one of my favorite episodes. It's really good. A lot of ways you can take action. All the parents, if you have kids in school, what you can find out if they're teaching CRT, which is a number of some racism and some Marxism. Yeah, he just sent me that Google Doc too. We'll post it on the What Did He Said page so everybody can screenshot it and use that as a reference point of how to find out what your kids are learning about. And Libertad para Cuba. All right, without further ado, Jonathan Cope. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming in hot. This is RPT, Red Pill Tamales. I'm your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. Yo. Very special guest, Jonathan Copel, and uh, from Louisiana, correct? That's right. That's right. Man, we're going to give you a proper introduction when, we're, when we wrap uh, yes. this recording. Uh, but my brother, John, is a patriot, and he got more cojones than all you suckers put together. Uh, <laughs> believe that. That comes from me, Chingo Bling, with the big tamarindo. So... Um, let's, let's dive into Cuba. Um, I know that we, we're going to get into CRT, critical race theory, this neo-Marxist doctrine that's getting, uh, pumped into our schools. Uh, thankfully Texas has banned CRT. Um, you know, people got their head up there behind about this stuff. And we're going to get into that later, how it's being disguised as, oh, it's just teaching history and we need to, you know, address the real past of America, blah, blah, blah. However, um... John, you're doing amazing work, and let's just dive in. 
the situation in Cuba right now, uh, set the table. What, what's going on? So um, a lot of people in the United States, English speakers have no clue because the, the most accurate information is coming from Cubans on the ground, sending messages through WhatsApp, posting something on social media. Um, the police are literally taking people out of their houses right now. Anybody who's sharing information on the Internet, Dina Stars, a YouTuber, was just removed from her house by the Cuban police doing a live interview. That was today, just maybe a couple hours ago. She said before she left her house, she's like, I'm holding the government responsible for anything that happens to me. It, they are responsible for it. Um, that That is not getting out to big national news outlets. For one, it's in Spanish. So the English people are just playing stupid. Like, oh, we don't have translators and we don't, we don't know how to decipher this information, you freaking idiots. Um, so the police in Cuba are doing that. Venezuelan troops have arrived in Cuba. There are so many people confirming this. Um, there's torture happening. People that are against the La Revolución, the government, they are being tortured. I don't know what the Cuban government's obsession with pulling people's teeth out. I don't know. I don't understand that. But so many abuelitas mm -hmm. are saying that they're having their uh, grandchildren and their children, they're having their teeth pulled out, and then they're being killed and fed to dogs. Mm -hmm. So this is... Um, it's a lot worse than what people are saying. This is not about COVID vaccines and people protesting because they need more medicine. Cuba hasn't had medicine in years. I went to Cuba a couple of years ago. There wasn't Pepto-Bismol or ibuprofen. So they've never had medicine. This isn't about having COVID vaccines. This is a freedom movement. And people are being murdered by the police and um, the communications down. They were using VPNs on the island, but the government's shutting down the VPNs, the Wi-Fi spotty. So you guys know how in, Amer in Latin America you have to recharge the phones with saldo. There's like no communication on the island. Um, it's very limited. Man, this is these are very strange times. Um, it, it feels like I'm in the movie Matrix where you have like a rebellion, a revolution, and you're having to break past firewalls. And it's like an information war on top of other levels. There's so many different elements to this. And uh, you mentioned briefly that Cuba you know, this Marxist communist country doesn't have access to basic supplies. Um, I've heard stories about, you know, Cuban Americans that, are, that try to send, you know, packages. You know, this is before this revolution. And the stuff that people wanted were uh, Cuban coffee because they don't have access to their own coffee. All that gets exported. Um, they wanted like Tylenol, like just basic little things. And um, I believe that it, it is very telling about our Administ current administration, our regime in America, it's very telling that they're finding a way to spin this into, no, everyone, listen, yep. <laughs> mainstream media, it's about COVID and it's about vaccinations. These are just little protests. They don't tell you the reality that people want freedom. Um, I heard you mention on a live you posted where you said, and I'm paraphrased, I believe that the Nicaraguan people, the Venezuelan people, and the Cuban Americans are the future of America because they understand the atrocities that can come with this rhetoric that, you know, BLM with the fist, uh, the organization, and um, uh, Antifa are putting out there. Recently, I saw communists marching in Austin, Texas. Oh, yeah. And so, so John, um, have you heard of any, like, Cuban American, let's say, radio DJs or... or are they allowed to really tell the truth or are they having to, you know, st stay in line? I mean, I don't know. You're starting to see on um, on the social media platforms that certain music artists are totally doing things that they would never do. They're posting things they would have usually never posted before and kind of starting to be a little more bold. Um, I mean, we I just imagine I, I don't know. I don't really listen to Latin radio, so I don't I don't know what, you know, DJs and stuff are talking about. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I would hope that they are just breaking whatever rules that they have been following and breaking the mold and standing up and being brave. Imagine if every massive major Latino figure in America started using their platform to speak boldly about what's happening in Cuba, the word would get out. The truth would get out. Um, but right now that truth is being suppressed by the mainstream media and the white house. The fact that the white house press secretary would blatantly lie to the world. She is a freaking liar. And I hope she sees this. I've been tagging her on Twitter because she's a freaking liar. And, you know, I'm a nice guy, but 
right now we don't have time to be nice. These people are communists. These people are Marxists and they want to destroy uh, Cuba. They want to destroy America. They've already destroyed Venezuela and I- I'm sick of it. So no more Mr. Nice Guy. Um, Jen Psaki is a freaking liar. White House press secretary. They're lying to the world about what's happening in Cuba. I would argue, I speculate that Cuban Americans wish Trump was in office. I'm not mm-hmm. sure what what steps he would take. But um, <clears throat> I mean, the fact that Venezuelan troops are in Cuba right now, the fact that the Cuban regime is recruiting, you know, as you mentioned, 17 to 21 year old. It's men. not recruiting. They're, they're forcing they're forcibly, kidnapping them. Yeah. Yeah. They're kidnapping them and they're saying, join us or be killed. Yeah. Imagine you being a teenager and put in that situation. It's like the gang, you know, join us or we're in the, like with the cartels, join mm-hmm. us or we're going to murder your whole family. Yeah. Hey, That's Jonathan, happening. is there anybody, anybody in the Latino community who you feel like is doing that, like using their platforms on a big scale off the um, top of your head? This guy, yeah, there's this guy I'm following. I don't have my phone. I can't, I don't, I didn't really notice him until this stuff started happening. His first, his name is Osmani. He's the one that put the video up. He's like, I'm ready to go. And he had his, he had his gun and then he went to the white house. Um, Man, let me. I'm gonna look him up. I don't know if y'all know who I'm talking about. I, yeah, you tagged him. Here. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know who he is, but here his name. Um, Osmani Garcia Oficial. Let me. Yeah, follow. that guy. Yep, yep. Let me follow him. Okay, he might be somebody awesome <clears throat> to reach out yeah, to. Yeah. So he share and then los los pinche boys or something or los pichi. They're um. Yeah, los los pichi boys. And what's the message that they're putting out on their platforms? They're just they're just sharing the news. Like literally what they're doing is as they get videos and as they get information, they're just posting it. They're not waiting. They're getting it and posting it. So they they posted um, videos of the police taking the kids out. They post videos of the police shooting people. I mean, they're just this is raw Unreal. news. This yeah. is breaking raw news. It, and that's, if, mm-hmm. that's what I've turned my platform into that. You know, I'm, I'm just I'm a teacher. And I was kind of posting a lot about critical race theory and how that's destroying kids in America. And then all of a sudden the stuff with Cuba's going on, I'm like, hey, nobody has nobody's talking about it. And I've got I've got people that follow me, big influencers. I'm like, guys, y'all need to see this and you need to share it. Um, so, that, I mean, some people are turning their platforms into Cuba news. That, that's what's happening. I hope more people do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's an emergency. Um, and if Americans haven't realized by now that the mainstream media is just not serving you, they're just not accurate. It's all spin, spin, spin. Um, can you touch a little bit on the fact that Cuban Americans 90 miles away from, from Cuba are loading up boats with supplies, guns and ammo to try and go help the the, the revolution? This is something that, you know, I, um, it's almost like me. I almost wish I could be with those people. Like I've never in my life felt like I wanted to join, um, some sort of cause that was like in the middle of a, a, like a violent situation. Like I never, I've never like wanted to go to another country and maybe fight or, or help the people. But right now I wish I was with those people in Miami that are loading up the boats. I'd be, I'd be, Hey, like y'all need uh, extra security detail to get this water and food and stuff out there. Like I'm with you. Um, there are Cubans from all over America that are trying to go to South Florida. They're taking their boats. They're using their own money and resources because the red cross isn't helping. Um, black lives matter isn't helping. You know how many black Cubans are on that Island? You know how many mm. black people mm-hmm. are, are Cuban people? Like, yeah. Black Lives Matter isn't helping. Mm. Uh, the U.S. government, the U.N. isn't helping. The U.N.'s a joke. So, so basically, um, you think so BLM doesn't care about Afro-Cubans. No, they don't actually care mm. about black people. All they care about is raising millions and millions of dollars and buying big mansions and causing hell and burning cities. That's that's what it honestly, that's all they care about. They are trained just like Che Guevara, who started the whole revolution movement in Cuba. He was a trained Marxist. Just like the BLM founders are trained Marxists, the the parallels you can't hide that. Yeah, when you look at people like uh, uh, what was his name, uh, Kaepernick, when mm-hmm. he would wear shirts of like Shea or he had the the Castro shirts on, and, and this will kind of shift into now oh, more, hell no. more of the uh, the U.S. talk. What do yeah. you, as an educator, what do you see? And what how does how do you interpret that when you see somebody like that who influences young minds? It's it's pure stupidity. It's absolute stupidity. Has Kaepernick ever lived in a country like Cuba? Absolutely not. Has he visited Nicaragua? Where you know, one time I was in um, El Crucero, Nicaragua, 
and I'm on this mountainside and we're, we're just, you know, my friend's taking me to see this mountain and there's a, all the houses are shacks, by the way, it's a socialist name. It's all shacks. Every house is a little shack in Nicaragua. The guy comes out of his house. He says, hello. It's, it's trash bags being held up by sticks. He goes, I'm so happy for my socialist president, Daniel Ortega, for giving me the plastic bags to cover my house. And, you know, me, I didn't want to like laugh and make fun of him. I, you know, I smiled and I was like, oh, that's so wonderful. You know, shake his hand and I'm because he's really happy about that. Mm. But these presidents of these dictators, these socialists, these communists, this is people think that that's so great. That communism is so great because they get free trash bags, free mm. trash bags. So when I see these Americans promoting Fidel Castro, um, Raul Castro, Che Guevara, they have no flipping clue that they are promoting the murder, the killing of innocent people, little grandmas, little children. They have no idea. And you know what? Maybe we should stop saying they don't have it. Maybe they do have an idea. Maybe we just need to start calling them out mm. um, for supporting communism. And that's it, honestly, I think maybe we need to just start doing that and stop saying that. Oh, maybe they don't know. No, forget that crap. Mm-hmm. We are. This is an emergency with yeah. the CRT coming in schools. We, we are. This is an emergency. Yeah, we're being, um, you know, dismantled from within. Uh, let's add Jay Z to that list. I don't know if he's rectified this, but uh, when he did his live MTV. Uh, album <clears throat> he was wearing a Shea Guevara shirt um sometimes sometimes there is ignorance mm-hmm. like I've been ignorant in the past to not recognize what Shea is about or what the little fist stands for mm-hmm. um but at some point like John Leguizamo he's not 20 years old anymore uh he's actively promoting CRT he's all in he is all in triple double down that's on, the uh, Latino actor right yeah he he's he's yeah. he's good at what he does However, he should probably keep his mouth shut when it comes to brainwashing these children. Um, so I have a target now, John. And sometimes I, sometimes I just need a target to, to go off. But, um, you know, in the music business, there's this dicho. There's a saying, you know, a broke artist is an obedient artist. That's why the record label always has leverage over, yep. the, over the artist. So in a country like Cuba, where they have been disarmed, you know, kind of like what they're trying to do to us here right. in America. An unarmed citizen is going to be obedient. A hungry, pro- poor, broke, starving, you know, citizen without weapons is going to be, be obedient. So the fact that these Cubans are are fighting with sticks and stones, like this is so biblical. This is so like Neo from the Matrix. Um, you know, all we're trying to do is just amplify your voice the voices of, of the people from Cuba. Um, my heart goes out to, you know, the Cuban Americans that probably feel so helpless. They got family over there. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. This is just like, I, I'm, 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 I'm with you, man. I'm yeah. so fired up over this. And it's just so frustrating that like you mentioned, uh, I think off air, you know, a lot of the gringos, yeah. they don't really, you know, they don't really don't know. They don't really know what's going on. Cause Jen Psaki gets up there and, and, you know, the way liberalism and this progressive left and, and these neo-Marxist ideas work is their idea viruses and they're so effective at spreading because they, they attack your heartstrings. You know, they it's all warm and fuzzy and everything's very yeah. like rah, rah, kumbaya. But um, it, it's it's not only the gringos, it's these Mexican-Americans, too. These Latinos got their head up the ass, too. And they don't know what the Che Guevara and the Marxism and what trained Marxists are about and what is going on right now in cuba so this has been going on for years right like there's videos of bernie sanders that are starting to resurface again where he has touted it how awesome fidel castro was for years right especially the one after his 2020 failed campaign run i mean there's just videos after videos and you can see where you've got like cuomo and other people from the left trying to give him an out of like you don't really think castro's great right and he just continues to double down and saying well you can still learn you know how to read in in it under a dictatorship and shit like that so this has been going on for years i mean tim pool and jack murphy and some of these people have been talking about it for 10 12 years and beyond talking about about uh communism and crt and a lot of these like uh equity versus equality and now it's getting to a point where it's really at a boiling point kind of like John, yeah like Jonathan saying like it's no longer a theory and idea that's going to happen at some point it's here yeah, yeah. and you, you we have- will be in the same situation as the cubans on their island uh, give it give it 20 years of this bull crap if we don't stop it now in 20 years we could literally be in that same situation um if they take away our guns 
then they can do whatever. They're already forcing all the mandates with the, the mass, uh, the vaccine. They're trying to go for vaccine mandates. Um, it doesn't stop. It just They just keep taking more liberty and taking more liberty. And then what happens to those who disobey? They, they had the uh, lady on CNN. She's like, if y'all want to disobey, and this, this is with vaccine stuff, but it just goes about government overreach. She goes, we, we need to make it harder for people who don't mm-hmm. want to get, say, vaccinated. We need to make it a thing so it's harder for people to live without following the rules. Oh, was it that I'm Asian doctor? Was it that Asian doctor? Yeah. She's always on CNN talking yeah. about that. And supposedly, right, she was the previous president of Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, her, her word means nothing to me because she's a baby murderer. It means nothing to me. Um, so th- we could be in that situation, the same situation as Cuba uh, in a few years. Uh, I'd say 20 years if, if the government doesn't get it together. Oh, man, that is very scary. Uh, and that's why we we uh, turned, you know, this platform into what it is. And I've been catching so much heat. I get called whitewashed, coconut, um, uh, self-loathing, uh, boot liquor, uh, Uncle Tom, Theo Tom, Malinche. I mean, you name it. I, I get I catch all the arrows uh, just because I started speaking about all this stuff. And there's so much pushback on the CRT stuff. Yeah. And no matter it's like it doesn't matter what evidence you show people i saw in the middle of your live you're going on a rant explaining about what's going on in cuba and one of the comments is like well how do you know or something like that and you're like dude yeah 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 get you to verify i want to verify the source i'm like dude these videos aren't good enough for you yeah it's like cubans re- going through so many loops you know their their phone uh, is tapped by the government Yep. Uh, they, they can't afford to even keep minutes on there. The internet has been shut down. They're trying to f- bounce out of the firewall. And they're literally risking their lives and their families' lives to get the info out. And people are just so cynical that they're just like, well, I don't know if this is real. It's propaganda. So what do you attribute to that to, Jonathan? Why are people so uh, just reluctant? Life is so easy in America. <laughs> the only reason I understand what the heck's going on and immediately knew how bad things before, um, what was it on Sunday when it was just protest and a couple police beating people? I knew immediately that it would not be long till the Venezuelans show up with their troops, till people are being shot in the streets because there are more Cuban citizens than Cuban government officials and Cuban police and military. I, I knew that immediately. When I was younger, I went to Nicaragua. Okay, I spent time there. I visited the border of Honduras and Nicaragua. I did a lot of missions trips with my church. So I was exposed to how the world really is outside of America. Um, I was exposed to the reality. You don't have what we have in America. You don't have that in other in third world countries. You don't you don't get that. And so it was easy. It's easy for me to understand this. But for most Americans, they haven't been outside of their wonderful little suburbs. They think um, the they think the projects are these terrible places. I'm like, no. Not only have I, ha, you need to go j- to the projects and go see how that is, but you need to go to other countries too because it's even worse. Uh, so Americans have no concept of what life is like outside of the United States. They don't understand how a government can just be in full control and and they don't realize how evil people can really be. And this goes back to the Holocaust when they had the concentration camps. People knew about the concentration camps before they were liberated. They just didn't, they didn't really care. They didn't maybe understand how bad it was or they were dehumanized to the fact that Jews were people too. Mm-hmm. And so what the media does and movies and video games is dehumanizing people to actual real life pain. And, th- you know, Louisiana is going to be taking out Holocaust education from the social studies standards by the end of July if something doesn't happen and they decide to add it in. Um, they... People don't understand reality because they don't understand history. They have no concept. And I think it's going to get even worse as time goes on because people are getting dumber and dumber. Wait, they're taking out the Holocaust history altogether? They have a um, social studies standards committee and every seven years they meet and make new standards, right? There was zero mention of Holocaust education in Louisiana for the next seven years. Um, the president of Kufi was with us. That's the Christians United for Israel to kind of ask them, what the hell are y'all doing? Why is mm-hmm. this the case? Um, Who, who's yeah. agen- whose agenda is that? Is that a leftist thing? 
That's like, that is one hundred percent Black Lives Matter. Um, Want to erase history? I'm at this meeting and a kid scream. Now look, the kid he's immature and he's not as poised as these professional activists, but he screams out and he says, "This is the Black Lives Matter movement. And this is everything Black Lives Matter is fighting for." So right there, we we found um, out who's really behind it all, and that's that's on my Instagram page. That video. Hmm. Very interesting. So, uh, so yeah, uh-huh. this is, we have a crisis going on all over America, all over the world. It's it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, speaking of church and CRT, at uh, I I attend. Me and my family we attend Second Baptist here in Houston, and uh, they had like this weekend seminar where they had different speakers, and one of the presenters uh, really talked about the roots of of CRT all the way back to like Herbert Marcuse, the Frankfurt School. And, you know, when I try to debate idiots in my comment section, they're just like, yeah, well, you know, people got to learn about slavery. And it's like, OK, we already do learn about slavery. And if you really want to talk about slavery, slavery is happening as we speak. You got human trafficking. You got sex slaves. You got uh, slaves, slavery and genocide forced labor in China, you know, making our Nikes and stuff, making LeBron sneakers. But um, so how was CPAC, brother? Uh, you you recently what a hard segue yeah i know, I know <laughs> it's man so deep it's my blood pressure going up i, I mentioned the comment <laughs> section i know i know i know it's it's uh cpac was wonderful it really was um i got to connect with a lot of people i got to uh meet people that i never you know would have met otherwise if i hadn't gone it was really nice you know but it, it's like it, again it's it's this bubble it's a it's it's a it's a bubble of conservative politics, and a lot of the people that are involved in conservative politics, I, I feel like it's become a bubble, and they're almost out of touch with the real world. And a lot of people are so focused on fundraising and t- certain specific target uh, keywords for talking points that they're forgetting how like to be a real human being. <laughs> Mm. Uh, like this thing with Cuba, I'm, I'm actually surprised more people that were at CPAC aren't speaking out about Cuba, the politicians and the, the leaders of the conservative movement and news personalities and everything. I mean, they always want hot topics to talk about. I don't know why this isn't this isn't hot enough for them to be just blasting everywhere. Um, and I mean, it's great content, right? Because we get to say things like, where's AOC? Mm. Um, where's oh, Maxine man. Waters? They were all protesting for black people. But now the black Cubans, they, they don't give two flips about um, but I mean, like, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just, this is like a general vague thing. There's some people that are really great and some people that aren't just, you know, there's fakers, there's real people. Um, but it, I mean, it, it was, it was wonderful. I got to see Donald Trump, uh, big daddy Trump was in the house. <laughs> hey, my puppy Trump, puppy <laughs> Trump. You know, this was so, this was so cool. There were a lot of Latino people at CPAC. I mean, it was in Dallas. So just, you know, it, it was a lot of Latino people in the crowd sitting in front of me was a family and it was silent and Trump speaking. And he's, you know, he's just like everything, you know, America is great. We're making things better. He's doing that. And this little Latino boy goes, we love you. Donald Trump. <laughs> and the whole audience is like, Oh, and um, just, it kind of tells you that the people, the people really love that man. And people really loved him. And his speech was great, too. And he, he talked about how he warned everybody what would happen. He's mm. like, I told you, I told you this was going to happen. Um, it was it was pretty good, man. It, it sounded so extreme. Nobody believed him. It's yeah. like, wait, you're telling me yeah. that this new regime is going to come in and take the side of Venezuela and the Cuban communist Marxist government, yep. not the actual people. So how can people take action? Like, how can parents take action uh, with against CRT in their communities. So we're, we're seeing it, right? We're, we're starting to realize that politicians aren't really making the difference. It's parents and teachers and students who are making the difference. Parents are showing up to board meetings and telling the politician about things that shouldn't be happening in school. Parents are showing up in groups. They're organizing uh, one group in particular, Moms for Liberty, they have a ton of members. They're doing great. They're organizing and they're, they're getting very, um, very good talking points and they're building up evidence so they can show up very informed and very prepared to school board meetings. That's what parents have to do. It's, it's really getting to a point where, you know, the school system is mostly full of liberal teachers and administration. For whatever reason, the majority of educators are liberal. OK, I don't, I don't know why. It's just 
for whatever reason, that profession is full of a lot of liberals that are extreme liberals. Um, there are a few conservatives like myself. Most of them are quiet. And they're not outspoken. They just want to do their job and go home or they want to do their job and speak up, but they're afraid. Um, so parents need to they need to stand behind any teacher that's helping be brave and speak out on the bull crap that's happening in the classroom um, and just show up to those meetings. They, they have to and keep doing it. And, you know, it might get to the point where you got to do some kind of uh, what is it, like a walkout protest where the kids don't show up to school, where the teachers don't show up to school. Um, I think it might it might wind up getting to that point. Um, there's been talks about vaccine mandates for, you know, students um come coming in august what do you think man is that gonna happen so i did an interview with l american about uh this kind of topic and shout out anthony anthony yep good guy and um you know they haven't said forced vaccines in schools yet for one it's a trial vaccine so you can't nobody can force it even though the NFL is trying to do it, it's all illegal. Anybody that's forcing you to get the vaccine because it's a trial vaccine, it's freaking illegal. And people need to know their rights and sue the crap out of these companies. Um, but the schools, they haven't said anything. But in New Orleans, this is what they did say. And I'm waiting to see what my area does, because if they do what I think they're going to do, I'm going to sue the crap out of them and I'm going to win. So New Orleans said that we're going to segregate the students. If you're vaccinated and can prove it and have all your, your ducks in a row and, and Go through the process of letting us know your personal private health information Mm. that we never needed to know before, but we now need to know. Uh, You don't have to wear a mask and you can, you know, have fun and come to school and breathe the fresh air and and you don't have to follow the rules. And if you haven't had the vaccine, you have to wear the mask, you have to uh, social distance, you have to do this and that, and you can only take your mask off if you're actively eating and blah, blah, blah. And teachers, the same rules apply for teachers. Now, when I got hired, I didn't have to show any proof of medical anything. I didn't have to give a shot card record as an adult. I didn't have to show them nothing. Now, all of a sudden, they want to know whether I have a vaccine. That's none of their damn business. And if they go that route where I live and I become a victim of this, I'm going to sue. Man, I'm just going to sue the shit out of them. So when you look at the NFL trying to do that as well, do you think that they that that'll fly with the NFL since the players are, you know, they're they're employees of a business and the NFL is an organization. It's not quite like a public oh, school. You ready? You ready for this? I have uh, insiders at the NFL in New Orleans, and I, I just happened to see the attorney general of Louisiana at CPAC. And, and this is this is one of the great things about CPAC because you run into people that you wouldn't normally run into. And I said, I said, Jeff Landry. You ain't going to believe what the NFL's doing in New Orleans. And he's like, what, what do you mean? I said, look, and I, I'm telling him, um, they've already told employees that if they don't get the shot, they will not be able to keep their jobs after a certain point. I have these documents. So when it comes down to it, if they actually fire people, they, they're going to get the shit suit out of them because you can't do that. Um, where is people's religious exemption? You know, you're going to tell me that a, a Muslim can wear a burqa or a hijab, um, you know, and it's, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Wear your stuff. Uh, but a Christian person that doesn't want to get a vaccine can't get a vaccine. Mm-hmm. That you, you, So you're going to apply rules to some, but you're not going to let others like where. So we have no more religious liberty in America. Uh, it, we're going to see some massive lawsuits, but it's going to take brave people stepping up and putting their necks out um, and, and really being brave. So I don't think it's going to fly. I don't think it's going to fly at all. The people, when the employees found out about that, the ones that I talked to, they were ticked off. They were not happy. Yeah, with good reason. a lot of them weren't planning to do it. Man, <clears throat> what I wonder is what entities or what elements within the league, you know, why did they choose to go in that direction? Instead of saying the NFL as a league is going to take a stance where if you're vaccine hesitant, you don't have to do it, you know, that's how we roll. Instead, they're kind of like, they're going to other, you know, kind of like the clean and the unclean with these players. Uh, Rob brought a document that showed what the unvaxxed NFL players are going to have to do. They can't have lunch with their yeah. teammates. Uh, yep. They got to sit in a corner, put on a dunce cap and wear a mask. Pretty much. Uh, they got to travel separate. They they ha- they don't have access to uh, promotional opportunities. Yep. It's kind of crazy, man. Yeah. So stupid. It's, it's like this it's like this COVID uh, situation is being used as a, a cudgel or whatever the word is to like just 
inflict all kinds of uh, obedience and, yeah. and it, it's crazy, man. Well, Candace Owens spoke at an uh, event I went to at CPAC and she made a really good point. She was talking about Marxism and how these socialist communist people, the ones who are following the Marxism playbook, they rely on constant crisis because in a crisis they can do things that mm. people say, well, I guess it's okay because we're, emer- we're in an emergency, we're in a crisis. I mean, look at New York. The Cuomo said, we're going to do with guns the same thing we did with COVID. Are you kidding me? Are you? When I saw that, I said, we don't have, America's not the same anymore. I'd hate to be living in New York right now because what are they going to do? Go round up the uh, guns? That, but, but by the legal people? Dude, the Trinitarios on the street, they're not buying their guns legally. The um, Latin Kings aren't getting their guns legally. MS-13 doesn't buy guns legally. Only people like me buy guns legally. We're the ones that have the paper trail where you can find and mm-hmm. track, and we're responsible. So I, it's, dude, stuff is so crazy right now. It, I, I kind of wish I was in a position where I could go into full time. I, I guess this is activism or or whatever news something because I, I don't care. I'll say the truth. I mean, we need it. We need it right now so bad. And, and people like you, there's not a lot of us that are just saying the truth and don't care. Um, and, and it takes it takes uh, big balls, man. It takes big balls to speak out like this. Well, Chingo already took all the arrows for the last year. So uh, here we are now, kind of coming out on the other side. But let me ask you this, Jonathan. Before the 2020 election or even, you know, before maybe 2016, did you have a strong political stance? Were you necessarily focusing on one thing versus the other? Or were you just being an educator? Dude. I was mostly being, I mean, look, I've always, I've always been like informed and, and abreast of what's going on, but I was never this much like people let's go wake up. Are you stupid or something? Like I never was like that until November when there was a, um, a, a worship event outside a Christian gathering in new Orleans that I attended and helped with volunteered. Um, and then after we had our event, there was like 4,000 people show up the mayor of New Orleans says she's going to threaten us with fines and legal um, stuff. And then she tries to cancel singer Lauren Daigle. And I, I said, you know what? I'm getting on the news. So I called the news. I said, hey, I was at the event. Let me talk on TV about how foolish you people are. And so that's what I did. I went on the TV and I said, we have a First Amendment right, just like BLM. You let BLM and, and uh, take down the monuments, people do all this. So before COVID and before the 2020 election, I was not this this. Um, this involved. I was not, I was not doing this at all, but people need to start. People are, need to start waking up. Are you by chance familiar with, uh, with the old, uh, Andrew Barbright's like his, um, his doctrine on politics that it, the politics is downstream of culture. Nope. I, I'm not. So uh, we always talk about this and I think Chingo, you've been saying this forever, but basically that like who, who runs culture, right? It's more of the left wing mm-hmm. organizations and we'll probably do a yeah. whole episode after this, like, you know, the left Hollywood music, the arts, and politics comes it's downstream from that right so if if you if you know that just that one statement in your opinion what's a way to kind of course correct where everything's going if you know that hollywood and the left and the in the arts control a lot of culture so okay so i've heard i've heard this is from the days of billy graham he said it starts in the universities you know and then charlie kirk he says that too and i'm sure other people have too but we see everything in the universities first and then like you're saying it gets to um, out to politics, which I guess the universities represent pop culture because, you know, all the young people are just all up in what's going on in pop culture. So I, I honestly think we need to stop supporting these liberal artists and Hollywood people. We have we can it's almost like we, we do need to boycott them. We need to cut off the supply, the flow of money. If you the conservatives control the dollar. That's why every time AOC or whatever tries to cancel a conservative brand that brand makes a ton of money that's why coca-cola lost all kinds of money that's why nike when they tried to make shoes for uh satan el diablo with that um tortilla volteada little nas like they canceled (laughs) they canceled buying nikes i know people that burned their nikes in their front yard and made videos they were throwing them in the trash can he said i'll never wear nikes again so we need to stop supporting those brands and um look we need to have a freedom tour and maybe I, I think you do comedy. Maybe we mm-hmm. could even partner on this. Um, we need to have MAGA rallies are very popular right now. Okay. Pro America is popular. That is the popular thing. You do events that are pro American with headline artists that are fun. 
you know, they can, you can bring your family to it and just spread American values. That's popular. We need to become the pop culture. We need to take over. I canceled my membership with the Recording Academy, with the Grammys about um, at the beginning of COVID. I didn't renew my membership. I said, these people are so liberal and so radical. I can't associate with them. I was an associate member, a professional music person in the Grammys Association because I've, I've been a recording artist and worked on productions and stuff. I'm not going to support them anymore. So people need to stop supporting them. We need to stop it and we need to create our own. Um, we already have great entertainers. So just stop supporting the left, starve them of their money and let them be socialists. They want to be socialists. OK, y'all redistribute your own wealth to all your people. Like <laughs> we're not going to give you more money to play with. Like we just got to stop it. Well said. Yeah. Every time I get a letter or any kind of correspondence from ASCAP or, or like the Recording Academy, it's mm -hmm. always like, in light of recent events, and we're going to so take this time, and, <laughs> and don't uh, remember this is AAPI month, and or it's always, they're always just cramming doctrine, this rhetoric of like uh, anti-America, victimhood, mm -hmm. um, yep. and, and it all ties back to, to you know, the CRT, all, all this crap. So... I guess to uh, circle you know, back. And, and the, <laughs> since you're saying that, I, I didn't I didn't think it was going to be like this. But, you know, the Grammys, they always post like pride, Asian hate, whatever, mm -hmm. gays, Black Lives Matter. They have nothing on their site. They have nothing on the Recording Academy Instagram for Cuba. They have nothing. I mean, yeah. we have the Latin Grammys. They have nothing. Yeah, it's Screw almost them. Screw them. It's almost like they're blatantly coming out as communists. <laughs> like their silence is deafening. I know this is all like breaking news. Like it's all pretty new. Not anymore. This has been happening for three days. This ain't breaking news. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to cut them any slack. Uh, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around everybody. They're communist. Exactly. Everybody from they're communists. Everybody from the Biden regime to um, you know. You know the the you know Jen Psaki, the mainstream media. Um, I mean, representatives in the House. You know, yeah. Maxine Waters, Cory Bush. All these people. It's almost like look at whose side they're taking. Pay attention to how they're spinning it, how they're trying to turn it into something else. And it's like they're basically taking the side of the Marxist communist regime yeah. in Cuba. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's We're, it's crazy. I'm telling you, the Latino people are probably going to flip America. Because I think what's happening is Latinos that voted Democrat are going to see what's going on with Cuba and how the Democrats actually do not care about the Latino people and they'll never vote Democrat again. Well, just look they at the Rio Grande Valley it. here in Texas. For the first time, it's as red as it's ever been. It's like fire red. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's fire breathing MAGA dragon patriot <laughs> red. If Miami wasn't flaming red uh, before, I guarantee you it is today. Oh, man. Dude, I, I've spent some time in Miami in the past and, you know, uh, from like Pitbull and, and his crew, his DJs yeah. and just different people in that scene. And, you know, a lot of them are Cuban-American and they would mention little things like we'd be young partying at a bar or something. And they're like, hey, uh, order Cuba Libre. And then they're all joking like, la mentirita, la mentirita. You know, it's a lie. Cuba ain't libre. And right. some of this stuff wouldn't get in my head because I came from a, a Democrat run inner city <laughs> public schools uh ignorant as hell uh, looking up to jay-z wearing a Che Guevara shirt walking into a target or something seeing the fist on a shirt and mm -hmm. you know they would mention things uh, you know like communism and i didn't really process like what well, what is that mm -hmm. you know cuba seems like a nice place like what, what, what what's uh, what is this stuff so we want to focus on action to uh, to our audience they want to know how they can get involved what are some some action that they can take what would you suggest, man, to, to help out with this situation in, in Cuba right now? Right now, we have to, I, I, I'm guessing you would contact your local senators, maybe, or state representatives, and tell them that the people of Cuba, what is it, 90 miles away from Florida, mm -hmm. I think closest point, yeah. 90 miles away from Florida are being murdered by the Venezuelan and Cuban government. Um they need to let I don't know. I don't know what the situation is with the Cubans that were getting on the boats, if they were actually stopped by the Coast Guard or if they were able to go through. Like, I have no idea. I hope they just went through. I really do. I hope they just went through and whatever the consequences are later, like, you know, I'll send money to their legal bills. Like, I'm sure America will do the same thing. But they, they need to figure out. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Honestly, like I have no idea what to do. I'm just sharing content. People need to share content. 
um, and get the word out. And then, like I said, state representatives and senators maybe might be the best bet because then they can call on the people that are above them and, and probably bring some pressure. But um, that's, I, I mean, I don't I, even I don't even know. Like, I can't go over there with my uh, guns yeah. blazing. Like, I can't I can't do that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to need I'm going to I'm going to need a whole bunch of other people to also have boats <laughs> before I hop in a boat. I, I can't be the only one in the boat. It's like if I it's mean, a thousand boats. All right. Fuck it. I, I'm yeah. Coming. I mean, look, I'm like I, I, I'm not going. So let me just make that clear. But if I was in Miami, I, I think I'd probably be like, you know what? Let's go. I'm going. I got my cell phone. We're going to film this stuff. I'm going to send it to all my contacts. Um and we're going to help these people become free. But I'm not going to do that. But honestly, that, that's kind of that would be the best help for real. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert on geopolitics of every country in the world. Um, do you guys, Rob and John, speculate? Are there, Could Mexico, is there another country that may be empathetic to the people of Cuba and anti, anti-Castro, anti-Venezuela, <clears throat> who might want to step in? Because if the U.S. does not step in, Russia is going to step in and Russia is going to be right there with their comrades aiming missiles at us once again. Or or I heard Ch- I think China's already involved with the- so Let me let me tell you. So I got an MBA in international business. So let's look at this thing as uh, let's look at the whole world, right? Who are the trading partners for Cuba? Right? You all your communist countries, like mm. China, um Probably maybe Russia, Korea, Venezuela. maybe I don't know what the relationship with North Korea is, but I know Nicaragua, Cuba, Venezuela, China, and Russia, they all trade stuff. Okay. The buses in Cuba, I think they were Russian La Wawa. I'm pretty sure it's Russian buses. Okay, when I was over there. Uh Nicaragua's the same thing, Russian buses. They don't trade with the USA. We give them chicken at a discount. We we provide them a lot of chicken, affordable chicken, so they can have food. Um, but that's it. People are like, Oh, there's an embargo. The USA doesn't help Cuba. No, no, Q, uh the US I it's either the U.S. or Brazil is the number one provider of chicken for Cuba. So yeah, if the aid. U.S. steps in, they will. What's going to happen is it it maybe could offend things with China, because China has interest in Cuba. If the U.S. steps in, it could offend Russia because maybe Russia has interest with the Cuban regime. So America is very concerned. Likely, this is what the White House is concerned about: doing something that would piss off China and Russia, because. The communists are allies. The USA doesn't care about Venezuela, like pissing off Venezuela that much. But if they get involved with the Cuban thing right now, that what's good, what could happen? You know, you already see Tokyo, Taiwan, wait, Japan, Taiwan, and India have already forged an alliance um, to like defend themselves against China, whether it be through trade or if they have to with with you know fighting back and defending themselves. They formed an allegiance. There's some crazy stuff happening in the international community, um, and it could really go down if, if you know, like, let's mm-hmm. say U.S. troops land in Cuba. Uh, and Cuba, you know, the, the president, whatever his freaking name is, he calls up China. He's like, OK, the U.S. is here. They're taking over Cuba. Then China sends a letter, you know, to the U.S., we beg you to stop interfering with the uh, people of Cuba. And because there's no real news outlets covering this Mm -hmm. that have boots on the ground with accurate information, China can say, oh, the people are being bad. The people are evil. And it's actually the government's trying to help the people. So they could put out their own misinformation. And then it's dude, it's it's a bunch of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the issue is 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 interfering would possibly offend relations with China and Russia. That makes sense. I, I wonder what Trump would do. If if he would say I don't care, you know, about Russia, yeah, no, no, I could see it, I could see that. Yeah, because in my opinion, I mean, I've said this till I'm blue in the face, but Mexicans don't want to hear it because they're 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 mad at. Are you Mexican? Yes, I'm Mexican American. So is Rob. Yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of our raza, our gente, they don't they uh, they got really offended when Trump said it's some rapists and some murderers and some child molesters (laughs) coming through that damn border, which is true. It's gone up six hundred percent. But anyway, um. I would speculate, you know, because one of the reasons I voted for Trump is because in my eyes, he was pretty firm and he stood against, you know, China and Russia. He was going to be kind of sem- somewhat friendly, but keep them at bay and, uh, you know, keep America first. Whereas these jokers we got in the White House right now, I feel that I speculate that they're very they're probably going to be like, oh, we don't want to upset, you know, we yeah, don't upset she she? she what's his name she oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she uh they them she she don't know ping 
Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. Yes. Yeah. Xi Jinping. Yeah. I, yeah. I was going where John was going. He, she, or he, she, they. <laughs> but no, it's Xi Jinping. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so you were earlier. You said circle back, which reminded me to actually use that stupid phrase that I can't get out of my head now. To circle back right. to what people might actually not not in particularly, but they're going to really want to hear more of your uh, educational background real quick. What is the biggest misconception right now with maybe uninformed parents that are now starting to like, what are my kids learning? Or what's going on in schools? Whereas before they weren't with this critical race theory and just education in general. So most parents, they send their kids to school, right? The kid comes home, the kid eats, goes in his room, plays video games, goes to sleep, repeat, right? Mm-hmm. So parents really very, they had no they, they're thinking the kid's gone. He's learning stuff, going to get prepared for college. It's almost like daycare because parents have to work. They have to go make money so that the kid can sit there and play on his flipping Xbox or whatever all night and just fry his brain. Um, the parents are starting to, re- they, they think, they say, oh, maybe that's not happening in my school. Maybe that's not. Well, when's the last time you talked to your kid? When's the last time you ripped out his Xbox and said, hey, uh, Chico, what's going on in school? Uh, Jimmy, what are, you, what are you guys learning? Uh, and I, I think what's happening is, Parents don't realize that this critical race theory is everywhere. I live in an area, I work in an area where you would have never thought it was happening. We have a teacher that signed the critical race theory pledge. Uh, there was about 4,000 of these teachers that signed it, okay, across America. 22 from Louisiana. One of them works uh, works where I work, you know. I don't have a problem saying that because it was a public document. It's all over the internet. Her name's on it. Um, Jorge, no, wait, Daily Caller. Daily Caller put out the article, and they did the, the research and they pulled up all the links and stuff. Teachers are promoting this crap in school. They're, they're literally indoctrinating your kids to be little Fidel Castro's, little Che Guevara's, little um, BLM activists. And that's, um, that's happening everywhere. So you, you need to start asking questions and digging. It just If you dig like this much, you're going to find some dirt. It's, it's everywhere. So parents, y'all... <laughs> When, you don't when, need it. If you if when, you don't know, like it's it's already there. When parents start to dig, what are like the first two or three things that want, that the parents should dig for? Other than talking to the kid, like what in specific should is there like you know syllabuses or or you know uh, curriculum type you know so, structure? You know, it's, what's yeah? The, thank you. Perfect question. So school starting in August for most people across America. Um, I think the teachers are going to expose themselves really quick this year. I think they've become very bold over the summer. I think we've had a lot happen. And it's going to uh, empower teachers to be super liberal. They were already, but now they're going to be like super. They're going to have big SL on their chest. Super <laughs> liberal. They're going to, I bet you they might put it in their syllabus. Um, that maybe. But what I would really ask your kid is, do you feel comfortable speaking freely in your English class? Because usually it's English and history class. Mm-hmm. English, history, uh, civics. or so Anything social studies and English. Do you feel comfortable uh, as a conservative in your English class? Do you feel safe? Do you feel that you'll be targeted? That's the easiest thing. If your kid says no, why is that? Why is that? And then that kid's going to bring up, I promise you, that kid will say, well, one time so-and-so spoke up and the teacher got angry. Or one time so-and-so had a different opinion and the teacher got upset yeah. and did turn the whole class on each other. And then it was just a real sad situation. Um that's the easiest thing to do. Do you feel comfortable in your English or social studies class speaking freely as a conservative thinker? Mm, that's that, great. That yeah, great point. right there. Uh, I want to make I want to make sure we we get this on video. So we're all pretty well versed on what CRT is and the dangers of it. Uh, I want I want you to tell our viewers, in a nutshell, what is CRT and why is it bad? So CRT is a Marxist ideology. Okay, and we've seen it be presented by a lot of the BLM activists who have claimed to be trained Marxists, just like Che Guevara, the people that started the whole communist movement in Cuba. So this is this is all very similar stuff. So CRT teaches people that America was built to oppress black people and make life more difficult for black people, that every institution, everything in America, every business, every entity is created to make life easier for, say, white people and more difficult for black people and other minorities. If this were true, I don't know how LeBron James and Jay-Z and Beyonce rose to fame. I, I don't even know how Lil Wayne, for, he's from New Orleans, the Ninth Ward, right? I don't, how could he come to fame if everything was built against him? But this, this is what CRT is teaching. And then it also tells you that if you're a black child growing up in America, 
you are not capable of succeeding because of white supremacy, because white people are oppressing you. Your little friend that that was your friend, little Johnny. Well, guess what? He's now oppressing you. Now that you know about critical race theory, now you know that he's oppressing you and he's racist and he hates you. Even though he says he's not racist, he is racist. That's critical race theory. Um, and I, I think the the last part of it that people don't get, and this is the important one, critical race theory teaches a lot about this equity. You hear equity thrown around. People are telling me, oh, in education, equity has a different meaning. Well, I'm a firm believer that if you tell somebody to uh, like F you, it, it means F you. OK, that's that's what it means. I'm not going to say the explicit word, uh, but you get if you curse somebody out, you curse somebody that doesn't have two meanings. OK, so equity, you buy a house, you own 50 percent of it. That's your ownership. Your neighbor doesn't have any ownership in your house. He didn't pay for that. He doesn't all of a sudden get half of your equity. No equity in education what they're saying is that we need to have equitable communities. We need to build equitable situations. What does that mean? Well, it means that the black children have it worse off than the white children. And we need to take things from the white kids and redistribute it to the black kids. It it makes no sense at all. It's claiming that black kids are inferior to white kids and it's telling kids, and this is going to be introduced in kindergarten in Louisiana this coming school year, if they don't change the standards, they got it in the kindergarten standards for social studies equitable community building, insinuating that white kids are superior to black kids and that we need to take from the white kids and redistribute their stuff that they own and that their families have in order to make a equal community so that nobody's really more successful than another person. That's socialism. That is exactly what that is. That is socialism. It's not equity. It's socialism. So that's a lot of you. That's like the critical race theory, um, and then Britannica.com has a really good um, page on what is critical race theory. And they pull up the original books like from the 70s that, you know, if anybody wants to look it up and get like a really uh, like a deep summary of it, you can get that on Britannica. Very well said. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to post that for my damn it, all my little ignorant followers, <laughs> whichever ones are left, well, starting to weed document. themselves out. I made a document what to look for. Um, I'll have to share that with you. Yeah, please send it to me. Yeah, it's very important because although a lot of this doctrine, you know, traditionally started in the universities, you know, like you said, Billy Graham mentioned, now they're just pushing it to younger, younger, younger. They're brainwashing our future, our next generation. Yeah. Well, you know what they say: the goal of socialism is eventually communism. Yes, yep. exactly. And a lot of this, a lot of this stuff about the equity, it reminds me of that cultural revolution they had in China under Mao, where it was about class, right? With them over here, they're making it about race, and, but it's yep. the same crap. Race and gender, it's the same thing. It's the same, same crap. Thing. Well, hey, John, we really appreciate the work that you inspire us. Uh, I'm speaking, you know, for Rob for as sure. well. Uh, please keep up what you're doing. Keep Thank spreading you. the word. Uh, the people of Cuba and, and and you know they appreciate what you're doing. Do not stop. Keep going, and thank you so much, man, for taking time. Yeah, and also, what, where can people find you? And I know you got a song that also came out on the Fourth of July, just like Chingo did. So, what are you doing when you're not trying to uh, better the world in your community? Um, I haven't been able to do anything else but try to better the world. Um, man, uh, you know, people can find me at Jonathan Copel. That's on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook re- at Real Jonathan Copel. Um. You know, I do some music from time to time. I haven't done it in a while, but I felt really like the need to do it. And I did do a song with an American Idol finalist and we released it on the July 4th. Um, Currently, the thing I am trying to do is I do want to book a a big, massive tour, like a freedom tour, freedom uncensored tour with real conservative patriots. Like it's going to it needs to be entertaining, but we have to promote American values and we have to promote truth and expose people that wouldn't necessarily have been exposed to the truth if it wasn't for us doing a big concert, whether it's a block party in the city of New Orleans or in uh, New Jersey, Philly, whatever, like, you know, we, we got to do it. That's, so that's like kind of something I'm working towards right now. But a- as of as of this moment in August, I will be back in the classroom Monday through Friday and um, having to sleep on Saturday to catch up. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, hey, man, uh, count me in on your uh, your freedom uncensored. Even if I'm if I gotta check people in, put wristbands on people. <laughs> if I gotta make sure we got ice cold Gatorade, because you know I was the water boy, man. I was the manager in high school, so I'm real good at making sure that that Gatorade ratio is proper. You were that guy. Yeah, I was that guy, man. Because you know I hit a three in during tryouts. But that wasn't enough, you know, cause uh, cause <laughs> equity. They should have took away, they should have took Hype. away from the tall kids and, and let little Pete. Right. So yeah. um, we see equity in sports, right? For real, for real, right? So yeah, man, that sounds like a great idea. Um, New Orleans isn't far from me. Uh-huh. I went to high school in New Jersey. I visited Philly in the past. So count me in. We just need to make it happen. We just need to make it happen. Yeah, count me in. And also, um, my comedy tour is called the Freedom of Speech Tour. And it's not going to Louisiana yet. However, uh, you know, we can talk, man. If there's a, a venue in New Orleans, you know, we can go down there, maybe have you come up, say a few words, maybe do a, play a song. Yeah, we'll figure something out. I need to get on this quick. I just, um, you know, I don't, it's like you don't know what to do. You just do. And you're kind of figuring out all this as you go. Like, I, again, I was just teaching, living my life. And now I'm like, I'm talking to the attorney general of Louisiana. I'm, I'm meeting with my state senator. I'm talking with conservative influencers. It's I have I have no idea what I'm doing. I just I have a I have a vision. I have an idea. And um, I'm just rolling with it. So. Hey, man, ready, fire, aim is what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> yep, that's, that's right. Yep. And I'm sure you that's- can. I'm sure you can gather uh, a lot of volunteers and, um, you know, yeah. hey, if you guys know how to do graphics and, uh, you know, run social media, photographers, yeah. video editors, make clips of, of everything Jonathan says, uh, I'm sure uh, you, you can assemble that. Yeah. For sure. Cool, All man. Right, man. Thank you so much, man. Uh, keep up the great work and we'll talk to you Thank soon. You. All right, guys.